This year, Magic Arena updated the new player experience to include some new game formats and boosts for new players. So if you're just starting out, here's what you can expect from your first few days on playing the game and how you can get the most out of building your collection from zero. The first thing you'll see is the tutorial showing you how mana works and how to cast creatures and other spells. Now if you've never played a Magic the Gathering before, this might be really useful to you to learn how combat works, blocking and all those extra things. But if you know what you're doing, this might feel a little bit slow and a little bit basic for you. So you can skip the tutorial if you want to, just by going up to the account section, clicking on the skip tutorial button, and you go through and unlock the first five starter decks without having to play through all of the tutorial matches, which might save you a little bit of time if you know what you're doing. Whether you've played through the tutorial or skipped ahead, you can have a look now at the learn more section under the app, which will tell you a bit more about the different play modes and how to access different things inside of the app. You might already know a lot of this or it might be quite easy to work out, but it's always good to read through it just to be sure at least once. And then you can have a look at your mail where you can get some free packs and you can find other news and announcements here as well. It's always good to check that in case you get some free things. To start with, you can only do bot matches against the AI Sparky until you complete the new player experience. The first is the color challenge where you can play five games with each of the mono color starter decks. For the first four of these, they're predetermined games where you get certain cards in a particular order, which is there to teach you different strategies and how to use each of the colors, their strengths and weaknesses. If you do lose one of these games, there will have been a point somewhere where you could have taken a different action and you can go back and do it differently next time to complete the challenges. It will give you a bit of a hint if you're not sure exactly where you went wrong before. I do have some individual videos on the color challenges that go into detail for each one so you can see exactly how to win the games if you're not sure. The links for those are in the description, but the super quick version for now on how you can use the strengths of your deck to win against the different colors. First of all, the white deck is based on gaining life and adding plus one plus one counters to your creatures to get them stronger. There's a few combat tricks in there as well, including a plus two plus two boost and first strike with a couple of enchantments. You generally want to buff up your creatures and keep them alive using your combat tricks until your opponent can't make any good blocks and maybe you can use your life as a resource because you're going to gain some life back anyway. With blue you want to take advantage of the evasion of your flying creatures and keep hitting your opponent in the air. You'll also get an extra little cost reduction on some of your cards and some extra card draw to help you get your creatures out faster. You can also bounce back any big creatures your opponent has to their hands to keep them off the battlefield and out of your way. For the black deck, it's all about killing your opponent's creatures before they can build up their army on the board. You can use these as combat tricks or just killing them at instant speed whenever you need to. And you can also sacrifice your skeleton creatures and you have a good flying creature that also grows and can do a lot of damage to the enemy over time. With the red deck, your strength is in the number of tiny goblins you can make. And there's a great enchantment with a raid bombardment where you can do lots of damage to your opponent directly to their hit points because of the number of tiny creatures you're attacking with, which is a great way to win with that red deck. With green, you have some creatures where you can make extra mana from the creatures instead of just from your lands, which helps you build up to putting out massive creatures earlier than normal. You can also add plus one, plus one counters to your creatures as an instant, as a combat trick to help keep your creatures alive. And once you get your really big creatures out, you can attack for lots and lots of damage because there's nothing your opponent can do to block a huge trampling dinosaur. The fifth game in each color you don't need to do yet, but it will be a real game against a real opponent rather than all these other games against Sparky. It doesn't matter if you win or lose the game for the sake of the color challenge, because once you've played one game, you can then move on to the next challenge. And the next challenge is an extra challenge against Sparky, where you get to use some two color starter decks and you can get a few extra rare cards from just completing this challenge. These games are not scripted like the color challenge games were, so anything could happen in these games. You could lose depending on what you happen to draw and how you play out your creatures. Winning two of these games against Sparky will get you two rare cards, and if you win a third game against Sparky you'll also get an extra cosmetic item, which is kind of nice to have but doesn't really affect the game in any way. And because you have three different decks to choose from, you could do one game of each, 
or you can just pick the one you like the look of the most and just play three games with that one. Once you've done those, you'll unlock the starter deck dual format, which is a format that will always stay around for everyone. And it's really great for new players to try because you get access to all 10 of the two color starter decks that you can play against real opponents. You can unlock each one of them and add them to your collection just by playing a game with it. You don't need to win to be able to unlock the deck, although it's kind of nice to, but playing one game each with these 10 different decks gives you a good idea of what each color can do and what their strengths and weaknesses are. Once you've unlocked the 10th two color starter deck, you'll have those 10 and the original five starter decks now added to your collection. So you can start building up maybe some decks of your own in the next step, which is Spark Rank. But first, you might want to redeem some of these free pack codes in the store where you can get three packs from various different sets over the last few years. So you can open those and add them to your collection for free. Because in Spark Rank, you're going to have to build your own deck to play against other real opponents. Now you can use one of the 15 starter decks that you've unlocked, but they're not as powerful as other decks could be that you build yourself. If you go to open all of these packs straight away, they'll give you lots of extra cards in your collection. And more importantly, you'll get some wild cards that you can use to craft some specific cards for the decks that you want to make. It's better to not use the wild cards as much as possible, especially the rare and mythic ones. Try to save them if you can. The common and uncommon, it doesn't matter quite so much because you will get loads of those throughout playing the game anyway. So you can use your wild cards to build a new deck and you can base it on one of the starter decks if you prefer or just do something completely different. Just try out some different things. What I did first of all in this example was I made a green and white deck which is kind of similar to the strength in numbers starter deck but has some other rare cards that work really well together at making extra creatures and building up your army as much as possible. I also included a few combat tricks that will help all of your creatures at once if you want to make a really big attack at the end to finish your opponent off. As I was playing my green and white deck I found that it wasn't particularly fast and the games were taking a little bit longer than I really wanted to so I also built this really quick mono red aggro deck which took almost no rare wild cards and I was able to make a pretty effective and fast deck which is one you might see other people use even in the higher ranks because it's actually pretty effective even though it's really cheap to make. I'll include the deck lists of the decks that I made here but they aren't going to be the best and it does depend on what cards you happen to have in your collection already so you might not have some of these cards and you might not want to use your wild cards so you can copy the kind of decks that I made or just make your own it's completely up to you. Either way once you finish spark rank you're now in bronze which is a good place to start. The game will also give you 600 gems for free, which is one of the currencies, the premium currency, whereas gold is the kind of normal currency that you win every day. So it's great to have 600 gems. You want to make sure you keep these. Don't spend them on packs in the store or anything else yet, because the mastery pass is the best thing you can spend your gems on, and we haven't got enough of that yet, so you want to save those gems for later on. You'll also now have access to all of the different current game mode so you can do limited games constructed events ranked games or standard or historic brawl you can do all of these different game formats now if you have a deck that fits into the requirements for that format and you'll have earned some packs so if you just want to play normal constructed games you can just open all your packs as you get them and collect new cards and use those wild cards that you also get to craft cards you want to play with and build the decks you want but if you want to play some draft games as well, where you pick cards from rotating packs and build a deck as you go, then you can potentially get more packs added to your collection by playing those formats, especially if you get good at it. So like I said, the, for the majority of players, the mastery pass is going to be the best thing you can spend your gems on to improve your collection. To get enough gems, you could go to the store and spend some real money on getting one-time starter bundles that are by far the best value to get as many gems as possible for the money that you're spending. If you do get the first starter bundle, which is only $5, you'll be only a few hundred gems short of getting your first mastery pass. So if you want to, you could spend your gold on a quick draft event, even if you aren't sure yet how much you'll like it, because you can get about 100 gems for each of the wins you get in a draft event until you get three losses. So for your 5,000 gold that you're paying to enter, you get to pick lots of cards that get added to your collection and you have the potential of winning the gems so that you can unlock your first mastery pass, which is a great place to start. 
when you start your draft, what you might want to do to start with is just pick the rare cards that come up and try to stick to one or two colors to start with because you want to build up the rares in your collection, but also in the draft event, you need to build the best deck you can to be able to have any chance of winning some of the games and getting some gems. So here I picked some red and green cards that were really strong, and then I saw some black cards that I liked, and a couple of really powerful white cards as well. So I was trying to decide whether I wanted to go with a green and red deck or a black and white deck. But I went through and picked all the cards I thought were as good as possible as I was going through it, but obviously keeping as many rares from the set as I could. So when it came to building the deck, I took out the black cards and decided that the red and green were the best options I could go with. But I also liked this one white card a lot, the Boonbringer Valkyrie, because it's really strong. So I actually decided in the end to go with a red and green deck with this one white card, and I had a few different ways of getting that white mana when I needed it. So this was the best deck I could make out of the quick draft where I just picked cards really quickly. I didn't really think about it too much. I just wanted to get to the point where I could earn those 300 gems. Make sure you have the right number of lands when you play draft events because you go down to a 40 card deck rather than a 60 card deck, which means you only need about 17 lands in the deck or so and a good mix of different colors if you're playing two or three colors in your draft to make sure you can actually play your cards and have a chance of winning. Even if you don't win enough gems from your first draft event, you can just pay another 5,000 gold to enter a draft event again until you do get enough gems and then you can buy the mastery bars. If you've spent the $5 on the starter bundle, it's going to help you a lot and give you a huge boost towards getting the mastery pass. But if you don't want to spend any money on the game, the draft events are probably the best way of building up your gems to start with just to get you on the mastery pass. You'll also find you have these 10 jump in tokens that you can use in the jump in events, which are one of the limited game formats where you can pick two 20 card packets and put them together into a 40 card deck. Just like in the draft events, you get to keep all the cards in the deck that you make. And when you win a game using that deck, you'll also get an extra uncommon card reward to add to your collection. You can then resign that deck and use another jump in token to pick another two packets and build another deck and then win another game and get another uncommon or better card reward. You can just use up all of your 10 jump in tokens and I'd recommend choosing a variety of different packs from the event. Maybe always pick one that you haven't seen before because it will give you a bigger range of cards in your collection that you can use to build the decks you want to play with. And that's going to get you off to a really good start in the game. You will have collected a good amount of cards to start with. If you've got the mastery pass, you're going to unlock lots of packs as you go along and you'll get lots of gold and gems as you continue to win games and maybe play in some draft events as well. Best place to start from there is building a couple of really good budget decks that you can start playing with until you decide where you want to spend your wild cards. And if you have any other questions about the game or the economy or anything else, you can leave that in the comments below and me or one of the other great magic players that come by on YouTube will be able to reply to you and give you an answer. And if I've made a video on that specific topic before, I'll link the video there for you as well. You can also find in the description lots of different videos that I've made on certain topics about the magic arena economy or how to build a car collection. So if you have a specific question, have a look there first. You might find a video that already answers the question for you in quite a lot of detail. So that's all we've got time for. If you did find this video helpful, don't forget you can like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos I make for you. Thanks for watching this one to the end and I will see you in the next one.